Continuing on now that it's night here in the Zora um, fountain, uh, there's one thing that we can do here really quick and we're going to get it before we head out of here. It's pretty, basically going to be the last thing that we're going to be doing here, at least for a while. Um, okay, Navi, what do you got to say? Okay, yeah, we already know that we need to go to Hyrule Castle. Uh, obviously, as you can see over here, okay, I didn't want to throw it that quickly, but whatever. Uh, as you can see, there is a gold sculpture here, so we're just going to go ahead and grab this token, and then we can kind of get out of here. There's another gold sculpture token that we're going to be working on getting uh, here in a few moments, and um, we're going to be getting quite a few of them today, so yeah. And, of course, this one's going to be the first. Let's see here. I'm trying to think off the top of my head how many we're going to be getting today. Um, I think it's roughly five or six, I think, off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of things we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing that. We're going to be taking care of uh, the Happy Mask uh, quest. Um, I believe this is going to be the last mask, so we don't have to really worry about, you know, doing much else. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, again, we have the boomerang, so that means that there are sculptures that we can actually get now. And, um, yeah, so as I'm sure a lot of people actually remember, there was one on the... It was, like, on the back of the uh, laboratory here at Lake Hylia, so we're going to go ahead and be getting that. And then we're going to be working on, um, immediately after this, getting the uh, happy masks... Or the way we're going to sell the bunny hood to the person that we need to be selling it to. Um, I recommend that you do it at night because um, the person that we're going after, he runs around Hyrule Field and he does not sit down unless it's nighttime, so you kind of want to just kind of make sure that you play it. Okay, that rope is massively in the way, at least we got that target and another token, hooray! So, like I said before, you're going to want it to be nighttime whenever we head out here into Hyrule Field because, again, the person that we need to give this mask to, he doesn't sit down unless it's nighttime. And um, he's just going to be running around the entire field until it is nighttime, and that's when he'll finally sit down. So it's better to just kind of start this when it is night. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, he has a very, like, his, I think the spawn point is kind of, um, like, it's just kind of there. It, it's a specific spot. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how it works. I think that it was the same in the original, but I could be wrong. All I know is that... Uh, by kind of like practicing this off screen, it, it's consistent, so I just kind of recommend that you follow where I'm going in order to reduce the likelihood of um, him being just off like in the farthest part of the field and you just not know where he is. I don't know ex his exact like running pattern, like obviously he's got a set like path that he runs, but I don't really know what it is specifically, and by the time you get to a certain point of like where the path is, you might be able to be on the other side of Hyra Field. So, I mean, again, it's better to just do this at night. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, if you start this at night, wherever he spawns, I think he's already sitting there, and um, he'll get up eventually and then start running. And then eventually, uh, while it's still night, he'll sit down. Um, so as you can see, he's over here in the grass, uh, just sitting here. Um, I forget what his name is. All I know is that he, people know him in uh, Majora's Mask as, uh, the, I think he's the postman or whatever. But um, as you can see, now he's got the uh, mask. Believe it or not, now that he has that mask, he actually runs a lot faster in the field, as far as I remember anyways, because um, he kind of kicks up a lot of dirt whenever he runs around, as opposed to uh, normally. Thank you for interrupting me on that. I wanted to kind of do one of those little back runs instead, but instead we just target an enemy, because why not? So before we go into Gerudo Valley, because that's where we're going to be heading next, uh, I'm sure a lot of people remember that gold sculpture that you can get on the wall um, in the entrance of Gerudo Valley uh, at night. Of course, we're going to have to play the Sun Song again, but we're not going to be getting that one just yet. There's another one that we can get that we couldn't get before that requires the boomerang. Um, over here, as you, I'm sure you see, there's... Um, of course, these rocks, and uh, in the middle of them is a bombable hole, as you can see the thing is kind of acting up there. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going down here, and in here you're going to find a bunch of uh, spider webs. Now, there are two ways you can kind of get rid of these. There is one, which is usually the most obvious one, which is the fire arrows, or you can use Din's fire. So... Yeah, I mean, this one here yields a cow, but behind them on the wall you'll see a gold sculpture. So we're going to be going ahead and getting that real quick. Uh, hopefully we don't miss. Okay, somehow just like decided to go over there instead, but whatever. Alright, there we go. One more, and alright. Target it. Okay, there we go. And then we'll get ourselves another token. 
There's another two areas here, one with a Shika stone, and then um, there's one with just a regular Skulltula. So I'm pretty sure that one's just there just to trick people, make, th make them think that there might be a gold Skulltula behind it, when in reality it's actually behind the one with the cow. So we're going to go ahead and play the Sun Song here, that way it's nighttime when we enter the Gerudo Valley. And uh, that way we can get that gold Skulltula token, and then we're going to be heading for Hyrule Castle because it's basically the next thing we need to do to progress to the story, not to mention that we sold that mask, so we can go to the Happy Mask shop and uh, give the rupees that we got in exchange for selling the mask. So, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get this Skulltula here, because it's been annoying us ever since we kind of first came here, just obnoxiously sitting up there on that wall that we could never get it, but now that we have the boomerang, we can get it. So, just target it, and another token, hooray! I think we're going to be up to about 41 by the time we get all the sculptures that we're planning on getting here today. Believe it or not, we're going to be, uh, instead of going where we were supposed to go, we're going to be backtracking to Long Lone Ranch and the Great Deku Tree later, assuming that, of course, we have time for it. But, I mean, even if it goes over 15 minutes, as long as it's not like 30 minutes long, then I really don't care. I can edit this afterwards or whatever, but, I mean, whatever. it's not a big deal. Like I said, we're going to be heading over to Hyrule Castle because now that we have the three spiritual stones, we kind of need to, um, you know, go check out the castle. Or I, it's, I'm trying to think of the best way to word it, but we have to kind of head towards Hyrule Castle. Obviously, you know, now that we have the stones, we should probably tell Princess Zelda about it. But I mean, obviously, this, it's not going to go as well as everyone thinks it's going to. Spoiler alert! Look at him run across the field. By the way. I mean, it was night up until then, so yeah, I'm pretty sure he doesn't start running until uh, it becomes daytime, so if you, you know, want to get him, I, I would recommend playing the, you know, the song, or the sun song and um, making the night before, whatever. As you can see, it's daytime, but the drawbridge is up, so of course this means that we're going to be, uh, something's up, of course, and uh, for whatever reason, I think in the original, the sky actually got darker just on its own as you approached the castle. For whatever reason, in the 3D version, obviously, as I'm sure you all noticed, uh, there were no clouds above Hyrule Castle, and there was no rain either uh, as we approach, or as we were approaching it. Now that we've approached it, it kind of triggered a cutscene, and now all of a sudden everything is very, um, you know, evil. We have this whole evil vibe going on right now. As you can see, a horse is coming, and this is no ordinary horse. It's actually carrying Princess Zelda, and um, yeah, Impa is also there. They're kind of escaping the castle, and I'm pretty sure we all understand why. I mean, Zelda already told us about this. Probably don't want to turn around, but we kind of have to because we have no control over it. Ganondorf is standing behind us. Fantastic. Obviously, Ganondorf has started making the move, and Zelda as well, as you're going to see here momentarily. Um, obviously, I don't understand how you could lose Zelda in that giant field of pretty much nothing. I don't understand how you can't just see a horse running around. But, um, anyways, we're going to just sit here and be brave. We're going to be like a 5 or 10 year old that just feels brave enough to take on Ganondorf of all people with a butter knife. And I haven't changed over to the Hylian shield, so I'm pretty sure a Deku shield isn't going to do anything here. But, I mean, let's try. I mean, why not? Of course, great idea. But, obviously, of course, we're not going to be able to kick his ass yet. Um, he's just going to look down on us and prove that he's the superior man, even though we are the hero of time and we are just amazing. But, whatever. I love these close-ups of people's faces, by the way. I mean, especially when it comes to Link because he doesn't talk at all like everyone just kind of bases their dialogue off of what he might say I guess but he just never talks so I don't understand the point of being all serious about close-ups on his face but well there's that and there was also Sar or, um, Saria's face as well that we saw when we originally left the forest but I mean whatever. Anyways, we get the Ocarina of Time. Hooray! A new Ocarina and it really functions much differently than the original Ocarina that we got, but I mean, special Ocarina and the Ocarina of Time, so anyways, I don't understand exactly how this works either. I mean, she just kind of puts her thoughts into the Ocarina somehow. I don't understand how that really works, but um, another thing that I'm 
I'm not going to really understand is what happens after this, and you'll understand what I mean whenever we get to it. Um, because it'll be after the cutscene. I don't understand how this works, but I mean, it, it works, I guess, so whatever. Anyways, we're going to be getting the Song of Time here, so we kind of need this in order to basically get through the door of time, and uh, that's something that we're not going to be doing in this episode. So, I mean, pretty much a useless song at the very moment. Uh, it's going to be useful later down the line. You, you can use it to move uh, objects and other happy crap, so I mean, it's used for that mostly, and just like unlocking the shit for the door of time, and a few other things here and there. But, um, yeah, it's pretty much just going to be used for moving items later. And like I said, we were in the middle of the river. I don't exactly understand how, like, a magical thought thing just kind of going there and whatever just kind of pulls us out of the river and in right in front of the gate. I don't, I don't understand that, but whatever. I'm not complaining. We're out of the water, I suppose. Not that, you know, we give a crap about being wet. I mean, Link doesn't give a crap about the law or anything. He just goes into people's houses, breaks pots, steals the rupees. I mean, why did it, what, what does it matter to us? But we're going to go here and we're going to, again, give the uh, rupees over for selling that mask. Uh, you're also going to see another little bit of a magic trick here. Um, of course, you know, he's going to give us a special mask, which is the Mask of Truth, which kind of lets you talk to the Sheikah Stones. Um, a few other things that I think it's required for, I can't remember off the top of my head. But as I'm sure you all noticed in the background there, um, random masks just magically appeared. He didn't put them on the shelves or anything, they just appeared. And uh, those masks, uh, the Zora mask, the Goron mask, and uh, the Gerudo mask, these masks only give you a little bit of added dialogue, which is just completely pointless, really. So, I mean, if you really want to borrow them, feel free. I really wouldn't, because there's no need. I mean, really. But, um, now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be heading over to uh, Lon Lon Ranch. Um, which is also going to be some place that we need to go at night. I, I, I'm sure this is getting old at this point. Um, a lot of people don't really like nighttime when it comes to Hyrule Field, just because they don't want to deal with the random enemy spawns, as well as, of course, the gate being up for Hyrule Castle. So, but yeah, we're going to be, we, we need to um, make it night. So we're going to play uh, Sun Song here. Uh, Oh, okay, actually, I didn't mean to play the Song of Time. I meant to play the Sun Song. This is something that I always seem to, not always, but frequently have a problem with. And it's like if I'm thinking about something, sometimes it kind of sticks. But um, let's just play the Sun Song now, thank you. And um, not play the Song of Time again. You'd think that the Song of Time would work just because, you know, but it, it doesn't. So there are two skull, er, two skull chillers here that we can get. Uh, one of them happens to be up on this little, um, okay, how did I even pull out a bomb? I don't even remember pushing that. I thought I'd press the boomerang again, but okay, whatever. Uh, there's a gold skull chill up here on, on the side of this building here, so we're just going to go ahead and throw the boomerang a couple times at it. So there's two. Now if we can just target this and throw the boomerang. Hooray, another gold skull chill up. So the other one is on the other side of the ranch, near that building that had the cows. Um, and of course there are crows here just kind of trying to, I guess, peck our eyes out. We want to kind of avoid them as best as possible here because I really don't want to take any damage really. But and this one's coming after us here. Just target and throw the boomerang. Thank you. Now as you can see over here, there's another gold sculpture hanging on this wall over here. Um, just go ahead and throw the boomerang, throw it again, and this crow, just die please, thank you, and we'll just go ahead and get ourselves another token. So, now, there's one more that we can get, and it's the last one that we can get in that area. We're going to be heading over to the Great Deku Tree here in a second. Um, there was a bombable wall within the Great Deku Tree that we couldn't obviously have that, there's a room that was behind there that we couldn't get to because, again, we needed the bombs or at least a way to bomb the wall, and of course we didn't have it back then, so we're going to be doing that here in a few seconds. So I'll be seeing you guys momentarily whenever we don't run into the wall. Alright, now that we're back here in the Great Deku Tree, um, this is a, this is a gold sculpture that we can't get as adult Link, by the way. Um, not only do you have to be young Link in order to crawl through the space, but... Um, yeah, the tree, you just can't enter it as an adult, so 
in general. So you, even if you could, well, I guess if you want to use the glitches, you could. I don't know if the, I think the glitches still exist in the 3D version. Um, but I mean, even if you do glitch your way in here, I guess if you glitch your way in here, you, you still can't get over here. So I mean, even if you can by some other kind of glitch, then I guess you could just, you know, bomb the wall with adult link and do it that way. But yeah. Now, the gold sculpture is up on the wall. I'm just going to go ahead and Din's Fire and kill both of these things because Din's Fire, believe it or not, is a one shot on the gold sculpture as well. So, I mean, I don't really care about magic. You just pick that up in the field. So, um, considering we're over 15 minutes and we've kind of pushed our time, in the next episode, we're going to probably be progressing through the story, possibly even getting a few more gold sculptures and maybe some other things. I don't, I don't know. Uh, well, you'll have to stay tuned and find out. So, um, be sure to stay tuned uh, for the next episode. Uh, if you haven't already, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. And until next time, this is the Poke Gamer signing out.